So we're going to talk a little bit about DNA regulation. And this is the general idea that if you look at an organism's genome, that not all of the genes are being transcribed and translated at the same time. It, it could actually depend on the type of uh, cell that, 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 that DNA is inside of, or it could depend on the environment for that organism. So for example, if you look at, say, a multicellular organism, this, maybe this is, and this is, these are oversimplifications right over here, maybe this is some type of immune cell, immune cell, and let's say that this over here is a muscle cell, and they're not necessarily, or not likely to be these perfect circles, but this is just for the idea, and they're going to have the exact same DNA. So the DNA in both of these is the same. So DNA is the same inside, and these are going to be, these are eukaryotes, so I'll, I'll draw the nuclear membrane there. Same DNA. But they have very different roles inside of this organism. So it doesn't make sense. In fact, it, in order for them to even have different structures, they're going to have to produce different proteins. They're going to have different uh, uh, enzyme proteins inside of their, inside of their cytoplasm. And so DNA regu regulation, one way to think about it is, well, if they have the exact same genome, how do they regulate which of those genes are being transcribed and then translated and which ones aren't? And even if you think about a unicellular organism, right here we have a bacterium. And so it's just one cell, but even it will not want to transcribe and translate all of its genes at the same time. For example, this over here, so this is, its, this is the bacterial chromosome. This right over here might be a gene involved in the, the digestion of a certain type of food if that food is present. This type of, and actually could even be several genes that are involved in that type of food. And we will actually talk, go in a little bit more de detail about when you have several genes that are related and they tend to be transcribed all at once or not transcribed all at once. So maybe that's related to uh, con digesting or consuming some type of food. Maybe you have some genes over here that are related to some type of stress mechanism. Maybe it needs to go into hibernation sometime. And so if it's not under stress, it does not have to express these genes. But if it is under stress, it does have to express these. Likewise, if that thing that it needs to digest is around, it needs to transcribe these. If it's not around, it does not need to transcribe it. So that's where how DNA regulation uh, works, for whether you're talking about a eukaryote or a prokaryotic organ organism. And so what we're going to do in this video is focus a little bit more, or a lot more, on the prokaryote side. Especially, we're going to talk about this bacterium. When we talked about uh, transcription in general, uh, in several videos ago, and in several videos, we talked about the idea of a promoter. That you have a gene that is a sequence of DNA that's part of the broader, that's part of the broader chromosome. And we said, okay, that RNA polymerase needs to attach someplace. So that RNA polymerase needs to attach someplace. And we called that place that the RNA polymerase attaches, we call that the promoter, and then the, the polymerase will transcribe the gene. And when we first talked about the idea of a promoter, we said, and this is generally true in eukaryotes, that each, each promoter is associated with a gene, or each gene has a promoter. But when we're talking about prokaryotes, and in this case we're talking about this bacterium, it's actually typical to have multiple genes grouped together that have one promoter. So the, this promoter here, and a promoter is actually called a, a regulatory DNA sequence. Let me write this down. So the promoter, so that's this part right over here, that's the sequence. That is a, that is a regulatory, regulatory DNA sequence. Well, that's what the RNA polymerase, which I drew as this big blob, it's a protein here, this big blob, will attach to, and then it will begin to transcribe all of these genes as a bundle. And when you have a promoter associated with multiple genes, that combination of the promoter and the genes, and when once again, when I'm talking about the promoters and the genes, I'm talking about sequences of DNA, that combination is called an operon. This is called an operon. It's a combination of that regulatory DNA sequence, which says, hey, RNA polymerase, bind here so you can start transcribing, and the genes that it essentially promotes the transcription of. 
And then of course, that transcription process takes that genetic information in DNA, transcribes it into messenger RNA, which can then go with the ribosomes, and we have the whole translation process, and this should all be review, to produce the actual proteins that have functions within or even potentially outside of the cell. And so we're going to dig a little bit deeper in is what can enhance this process, uh, make this happen more frequently, or things that might inhibit this process in some way. So as I mentioned before, this is just what I had just drawn. We have our big RNA polymerase blob, and this is an oversimplification for what it looks like, attaching to the regulatory DNA sequence, which we call the promoter. And then it will do the transcription, which will produce mRNA, which, can, which encodes the information in those genes. But what if we're in an environment where we don't want to transcribe this particular operon, this particular uh, series, or maybe I should say this particular series of genes? Well then, we might, something in our environment might allow repressors to take action. So what are we talking about a repressor? Well a repressor, a repressor right over here, you see it, you see it attaching to a sequence of DNA after the promoter, and so it blocks, it blocks the RNA polymerase from being able to do the transcription. And so this right over here, this is a protein that is called the repressor. It's literally repressing the transcription. And the regulatory DNA sequence where it attaches, that is called the operator. So once again, promoter was a regulatory sequence where the, where the RNA polymerase can attach. And then the operator is a regulatory sequence where a repressor can attach and keep that RNA polymerase from actually being able to perform the, the actual transcription. And so the, this, this keeps the gene from, from keeping, uh, continuing to, to, to transcribe and then translate uh, these actual genes. And you might even have extra mechanisms, and you can even think of them as feedback mechanisms. Uh, or ways to, to understand the environment, where the, oper where the repressor, I should say, this protein, can only do its job, can only, so let's say that's its repressor, where it can only do its job if it has other molecules that attach to it. So maybe this one can only do its job if it has another molecule attached to it. And in that case, these smaller molecules, these are called co-repressors. Co, co-repressor. And we'll go into more detail when we talk about things like the trip operon uh, of how trip, tryptophan, an amino acid, can actually act as a co-repressor. Now over here, we have the other way around, where we want even more transcription. And in that case, we would have something called, we would have a, an activator. And this, let me shade it in. This DNA right over here, this would be the regulatory sequence where the activator binds. And so this would be positive feedback. When you have more activators, you're going to get more transcription. While this would, would be, and actually I shouldn't even call it feedback because that implies that somehow these products produce the activator or these products produce the repressor, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be, you could imagine that case, but it's not necessarily the case. I should just say that this is repressing and this is activating. It's going to make more of the transcription actually happen. And just as we could have co-repressors, small molecules that you could think of as activating the repressor, you can also have small molecules that can turn the activator on. And these small molecules that turn the activator on, these are called inducers. So this right over here, these are inducers. So this, this protein right here couldn't activate that, that operon, but now that you have these inducers, and we'll study that a little bit more when we think about the LAC operon, this could be a, a small sugar of some kind, well then it can turn on the activation. So this right over here is called an inducer. So that's just a high level overview of DNA regulation. As you can imagine, this can get very, very interesting and complex where you have your repressors and co-repressors and activators and inducers uh, that might be dependent on the environment that the cell is uh, in, what's going on in, in, its, in its broader uh, ecosystem. There's all sorts of feedback and feed forward loops that might be going on. And that's why the study, we could have the sequence, and we, in fact we, we do sequence uh, entire genomes, but even once you have the sequence, it's incredible 
incredibly complex to understand uh, all of these, these loops of these feedback and feed forward loops uh, to understand how these things actually interact with each other.